Hello, this is Mark Boyer, and this is a short informative video on our courtesy notice that I filed uh, uh, with authorities. Okay. Now the reality is, is this courtesy notice is really legal. Okay, it's perfectly legal thing for the Marijuana Party of Canada to undertake, and basically, it's not something the party as this letter addresses, it's not something that can be done really through the National Marijuana Party of Canada, but it can be done through an EDA in any province in Canada. Okay, it's perfectly legal. You can go to a lawyer to affirm this, but frankly, what you need is a uh, someone who is not a lawyer but what is called a counselor who is a consultant of common law because as soon as you're in parliament you can defend yourself under common law and a lawyer in Canada simply cannot bring up a common law defense in a Canadian courtroom except the Supreme Court of Canada or he'll be disbarred. So the kind of legal expert you want is someone like I found, okay? Uh, this man wrote UCC trust documents uh, for uh, most of his career. He's semi-retired and uh, he's become the CFO for our electoral writing, our electoral district association, EDA. Now, uh, he's a constitutional expert. He actually writes. He has written official trust documents for the government of Canada and most of the provinces, all sorts of corporations in the United States. He's a trust funds expert. Okay. And take my word for it. What we're doing in this courtesy notice is exactly as to UCC uh, regulations and how to do it. Okay. Uh, the reality. People should read this, okay, and take at heart that it offers the ways and means to totally legalize marijuana, okay, once and for all, one province at a time, period, okay, because we are a body. The Marijuana Party of Canada has official status. We just got that paperwork through. Okay, we are a 100% fully recognized party in Parliament. Okay, and the MMAR part, uh, the Health Canada operates on what's called a trust, which are written into articles. And when they set up the, mer the mer medical marijuana access regulations, the MMAR, there was a trust written for that program okay it's a contract between at the time it was written it was done through the liberal party so it's done by the majority in power but it represents parliament these articles of the mmar program are a contract with parliament the marijuana party of canada is an officially recognized party in parliament and when those art went back on June 19th, as it says in here, Health Canada turned in the articles, the parliamentary articles of our beliefs. We're the Marijuana Party of Canada. Okay? Those are our articles. And as well as the Liberal Parties and the Conservative Parties and the NDP. But you know what? We're called the Marijuana Party. And those are the medical marijuana access regulations that are tabled. They're now sitting in, uh, or at least a copy of, is sitting in the Library of Parliament in Ottawa. And they're floating on water. Okay? They're articles. They can't be destroyed. It's a thing that can't be destroyed. And many times articles will be retired and brought back out later. There's a fine history of that. But, okay, while these articles are floating on water, we of the Marijuana Party are undertaking 
maritime salvage rights to grab these articles. Okay? Literally rob them. And it's perfectly legal. Okay? Because they've abandoned it. Okay? Now, as I said before, taking the, the entire articles for every province at the national level of the marijuana party is not a wise move because the program doesn't work. Okay, it's non-functioning. As we express in here, what the government's trying to do is ram down what's called a universal codex, the rules and regulations that Health Canada wants to administer, and Nash across the whole nation. And it doesn't work because BC has all these beautiful court rulings and Ontario has these beautiful court rulings and Quebec has these beautiful court, room, uh, court rulings that actually are being suppressed because the other provinces haven't caught up. And that's the excuse they're doing. You know, let me take an example of in BC here, we have a Chan decision that said pot should be sold through the liquor stores and they threw the case out. Well, shortly after that decision came, lawyers went into the Supreme Court of B.C. and argued that they had to put that case in estoppel. Okay? Now, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of cases in B.C. where they can't be used as precedents, nod, nod, wink, wink, the lawyers know this, we're not supposed to, and they they can be mentioned in court rulings, but they can't be stood under. Okay? Now, we of the, my program, the, the, the thing I set up is that we as an EDA uh, are taking the canton uh, of BC. Okay? Cantons. That's a UCC term. Okay, and again, I'm telling you, we're doing this through UCC because UCC, everything UCC is done at the civil court, not done in criminal court. Okay, if anyone does bust you at the criminal level, you're parking yourself in civil court within a week after the bust, period. Okay, it, it, you're standing under UCC, which is civil law defense, and civil law defense trumps criminal defense any day of the week. But you have to operate under UCC rules and regulations to be defended under. So you can stand under these rules. Okay. Now, basically, Health Canada did something that's been unprecedented in Canadian history, which is return articles in default and wanting new articles. Wanting new articles is one thing, but totally defaulting on the articles of the MMAR program has never occurred in Canadian history. Period. Okay. And Section 8 of the Criminal Code is called the Territories Act. Parliament is a territory under the Territories Act. The Marijuana Party occupies a territory under the Territories Act. All common law defenses is Section 8.3 of the Territories Act. And our kind of lawyer is gifted at being able to defend that. Section 8.2 of the Territories Act says that if there's been a something occur that has not ever been done in Canadian history, that it has to fall back on English case law. Okay? Period. That's what the law says. Our Criminal Code of Canada has a Section 39, Defense with Claim of Right. Okay. Now, we are claiming that our territory has been infringed upon, encroached upon, and almost destroyed by the abandonment of the, the MMAR program. And by rights, we have a duty to protect the 50,000 people who are protected by that act, who are now having their, uh, uh, their articles you know, their ass hanging up in the air because they've been let go. Now, the reality is, is we are seizing the uh, MMAR program for BC because that's workable. Okay? And that's done under Maritime Salvage Act. And I've got an expert in law who claims this is a piece of cake. He's taking it to really high lawyers 
And they agree. This is perfectly legal. Okay? It really is. Okay? Now, how it works. Okay? As soon as we seize the articles, we'll be filing with Supreme Court of BC that we are now the administrators of the MMAR program through maritime salvage law. And uh, we want to bring up the fact that uh, under our trust of serving the creator instead of serving the sovereign's interest, uh, we need to review the Chan decision, we, which is in Estoppel. We need to re review the, uh, uh, the Smith decision. We, we need to review the Boyer decision. Okay, that's me. Okay, who all had cases placed in Estoppel under the MMAR program in these files. Now, the reality is not anyone can go look at the articles of belief. But the guy we hired was a guy who wrote articles. So he has the authority and knows the protocol of what, you know, uh, and he can actually look at the articles and formulate the arguments that he takes before the court because of his qualifications of being able to look at the articles. So the reality is we don't have a lawyer. We can't use a lawyer. A lawyer cannot defend common law rights. But these com these UCC trustees, and we found a semi-retired one, who really likes the concept of serving the creator as a UCC public trust challenge. And what he also really likes is my solution is, see, we have to rely on Canadian case, or since there's no precedent in Canadian case law precedent for what happened, we get to pick which case law precedent we're attacking. And as the letter said, uh, it's fair to say we're working under King Henry VIII's rule, where the king was above the law and all his horsemen and henchmen acted as if they were above the law because the it changed you know like they had immunity because they were doing the, serving the sovereign's interest and the king was above the law okay in 1559 the the solution to that was called the act okay and that's where queen victoria said no one is above the law and that's been abused totally abused actually it was just totally reversed 3 years later under the, the act of supremacy of Parliament, uh, but 300 years later, you know, 400 years, 500 years later, it through several you know consecutive applications to the UCC, uh, every body is above the law. And um, if you look at my first UCC argument, I make it very clear that the solution to the fact that Harper is acting above the law, corporations who are bodies are acting above the law, when the law says no one is above the law, is to change the Act of, Suprem the Act of 1559 that affects Respondent Superior. And if Respondent Superior changed from no one is above the law to no body is above the law, everything would change. Uh, corporations would start serving humanity real quick, okay? Because these bodies are no longer above the law, okay? Period, okay? Uh, it's a huge monumental change that would probably trigger what's called the millennium, which is a legal term for the year of my Lord's grace and jubilee, okay? It's a solid attempt at doing it, okay? And we're starting this in the West, Okay, and what we're encouraging people to do is, in the next week or so, we're going to be filing all this beautiful paperwork. Okay, and what happens is, is by cherry picking the decisions and having a crown counsel with this guy beside him, arguing over which ones are we going to bring forward and reverse under serving the creator. Uh, we agree that not every case in there has to be brought up. That would be indiscriminate and foolish, but we could pick, in our case in BC, pick the Chan. Pick in B, in, in, in Ontario's case, they could say, let's take the, the, the estoppel nature of Murnau's case out and Parker's estoppel. You know, like there's each province has some case precedent settings and by going to a court, uh, and having these decisions reversed means, uh, the very next day in BC's case, Pot would be, for all, for all intents and purposes, legal. Uh, we really wouldn't need the sensible BC because 
uh, the Supreme Court of BC became sensible. Okay, they're now going to enforce the Chan decision. They're now going to enforce the Smith decision, which they haven't been able to do because of encroachments put by a program that was run through Ottawa. Now the program is being run in BC, and we can come to BC Supreme Court judges and ask them to take back the powers that were stolen from the Health Canada. Okay, and we're doing it on the understanding that we're serving the new use, the new UCC public trust of serving the creator instead of serving the sovereign's interest, which is serving money. It means the courts have to recognize that serving this creator is a valid trust and the ripple from that effect will trigger the year of my Lord's grace or the millennium. That's it. Okay, it's a good solid attempt. It's uh, about, it basically, uh, the defense is, uh, if we start serving the creator, uh, then that's basically the only rule we have to do to change and meet all the requirements of uh, administering a, 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 a well-run uh, MMAR program, which it's not right now because the the bosses of Health Canada uh, are serving shareholders called uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies, and they'll never agree to relenting any rights that would affect the dime of their profit. Okay, so it's a conflict of interest. We're calling them on a conflict of interest, and in real terms, under the Act, it's called failure of an entity to comply with the law. Section, uh, I think 19, it might be 17 of the Police Act. Okay, and it's there to place uh, Health Canada in default. And we of the Marijuana Party, under Section 39, which is actually different... It, Actually covered under the new section 34. It's worded different, but I'm not familiar with that. You know, I'm not comfortable with the wording. But basically, section 39 says that defense with claim of right, anyone with a claim of right and anyone acting under that claim of right can trespass on the Crown's domain, break the law. Okay? Exemptions under UCC. Okay? And defend, you know, and defend this, you know, and break the law and defend this possession from someone who has the authority to take it away from you. Well, you know what? Stephen Harper and his cabinet and all his cronies have the right to take this program away from him. But you know what? We can defend that these articles of our belief are the parliamentary articles of our belief. And we have every right, constitutionally, to seize these articles in order to protect the rights of 50 to 100,000 people who are being officially covered and quasi-covered quasi, -quasi -covered under the MMAR rules and regulations that are well stipulated in the articles that are in BC. Uh, we're seizing the articles for BC, okay? The paperwork can be done in every other province to seize the canton of the province and then other EDAs can follow. They can either seize the, you know, fall under us or also try to grab the articles for the province. But you know what? We're, we're the marijuana party and we're grabbing the articles in order so that it facilitates every canton in the province to uh, have a compassion club, to have dispensaries, to have... Um, Growers who don't have to pay a $300,000 license fee, which is what the MMPR program just threw out. You know, if you want 50 lights, you got to pay $300,000. And as the guy who's uh, our, our CFO says, well, that's what they did to the fishing industry. Okay? Fishing industry licenses used to be peanuts. They're now going for a quarter million dollars in less than 10 years. And these guys are starting off at licenses for a year being $300,000. Per license, per location. And they have to buy a quarter million dollars worth of equipment and all this stuff. They're making pot, you know, like, they're not trying to make a program work. Now, we can't tell them they're not, they can't do their program, but they have to compete. Health Canada has to compete against us, who are operating on the rules and regulations set forth by UCC.
because UCC rules and regulations have to be followed. And uh, what can I say? Uh, grab this courtesy notice. It's well worth the read. Okay, it, we cover all points. Okay, all points that we need to cover are there, including being able to attack your trusts and seizing trusts and everything's there. It's done in a, a, a layman's language. Uh, the real technical one will come from our CFO. Okay, and all kinds of documents, just like Heather did under the OPPT, will be following and will be setting dates in court for lifting uh, key court rulings. And people should know that for all intents and purposes, that means pot's legal, in perfectly legal in BC through the MMAR program which could be established everywhere in the province by simply filing for an EDA and uh, registering your growers. And I'll do an entire program on uh, video on that, okay, uh, following up shortly. But, you know, this is really good news, okay? It really does mean province by province by province, the full legalization of marijuana, and the first provinces that can attack this are B.C., Ontario, Quebec, and... Alberta in that order, okay? That because they all have very good suppressed use case law files that are in estoppel. And all you have to do is reactivate those files by going to a Supreme Court motion. And as soon as those court rulings are now supreme as law, which is what common law is supposed to do, okay, that's where our Constitution is based, is that Supreme Court rulings in our province apply to our province. Thank you.